In this video, I will show some easy examples of proofs of statements with quantifiers. And I'm going to choose very simple statements, some of which don't really need to be proven, because I want to illustrate in easy cases how we could write a formal proof for something that involves a for all or a there exist. Here's the first example. I have a theorem that says the following. I define the set A as a set with these three elements, 2, 3, and 4, and I want to prove this. This reads that for every x in A, x is positive. Um, how do we do this proof? Well, uh, since I need to prove that this inequality is true for every element in A, I'm going to check all the elements in A one by one. There are three elements, so that won't take long. I need to check that 2 is greater than 0, which is true. 3 is greater than 0, which is true. And 4 is greater than 0, which is true. And that's it. I don't need to do anything else. Um, this little square at, I've written here means end of the proof. So that was easy. Let's do something else. Here's a second theorem. I'm going to write something similar, but for a different set. This reads, for every integer x, x is greater than 0. And, well, we can't really prove this because this is false. This is not true. Not every integer is positive. Okay. So, since this is false, instead of seeing how we would prove it, we can't, let's see how we prove it is false. Okay. So, to show it is proof, it is false, um, I will need to prove the opposite. Okay. So, to show that a statement is false, I need to prove that the opposite is true. So let's start by writing the opposite. What's the opposite of saying for every integer x, x is greater than 0? What's the opposite of saying this is true for every x? The opposite is saying this, this is not true for at least one x. So the opposite of this is that there exists an integer x such that x is less than or equal than 0. That's the opposite. And let's give a name to this. These two statements are opposite, and we say that one of them is the negation of the other. So in general, this was easy, but in general, in some more complicated, long, maybe convoluted statements, to prove that something is false, I will write this negation, which is the opposite, and I will prove that the negation is true. All right, so let's do that. Let's prove that this negation is true. Now I need to prove that this thing is true. And this thing doesn't start with for all, it starts with there exists. So all I need to show is that there is one integer that satisfies that. Since I only need to show there is one, I get to choose any integer I want. So for example, I'm going to say I will take x to be minus 6. I get to choose it, and as long as it works, only one is needed. Let's see. Minus 6 is certainly an integer, and minus 6 is certainly less than or equal than 0. That's it. There is nothing else to do. We've proven this is true, and therefore we've proven that that is false. Let's try to do something less straightforward, something that requires a little bit more care. Okay. Here's another theorem with quantifiers that won't be a single line. Uh, I want to prove that for every integer, sorry, for every real number in this interval between 2 and 5, this expression is greater or equal than 7. So let's try to write a proof. I cannot do the same thing I did in the first theorem. Remember, in the first theorem, since I only had three elements to check, I checked them all one by one. But now I have infinitely many elements there. Between 2 and 5, there are infinitely many numbers, because these are real numbers. So I cannot check them all one by one. I could never finish. Since I cannot check them all one by one, I'm going to try to check all of them at once. So this proof is going to start by writing the following. I'm going to say, let x be an element between 2 and 5. And I want to make an important note about this, this word here I wrote, let. When we say this, when we say this, what this means is that I don't get to choose x. I 
I need to write a proof that will work for all x's at once. So I let x be a number in there, it's a generic one, it could be any of them, and I don't get to choose it, I have no control over it. So I'm going to write a proof for all of them at once, I don't choose one of them. The only thing I'm allowed to use, since I don't know what x is, is that x is in this set. So the only thing I know is that x is going to be between 2 and 5. That's the definition of that set. Now, I'm trying to obtain a bound here for an expression involving for x. So really, I don't need those two things. Uh, the, only part I know, the only part I need is that x is greater or equal than 2. And since I'm looking for something with 4x, this is going to imply that 4x is greater or equal than 8. Now, I have a lower bound for 4x. Now I need to look at sine x. And luckily, without knowing anything about x, we always know what's the largest and smallest values that sine can take. It's always bounded between minus 1 and 1. So I can say that sine of x is greater or equal than minus 1. Now, putting those two things together, if I simply add them up, I'm going to get that 4x plus sine x is greater or equal than 8 minus 1, which is 7. And so what I've done is taken a generic element in two, between 2 and 5 and using nothing specific about it, I've concluded that this expression is always greater or equal than 7. So this completes the proof.